Hello and welcome to our uh, digital live tour on Facebook here at the uh, memorial site of the former concentration camp in Dachau. My name is Stefan Burger. I am uh, work as a guide here at the memorial site uh, and today I will show you around a little bit uh, at the uh, so-called crematory grounds, the area uh, of the crematorium. Uh, and, uh, and my back you see uh, at the moment uh, the, 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 our memorial site there are no visitors. Uh, we are closed, uh, completely closed to, due to the uh, lockdown, the corona lockdown. Uh, what you see, uh, what, what uh, Stefan is showing you at the moment is the concrete foundations of the uh, barracks of the former concentration camp uh, and uh, the crematoria grounds, the, the area of the crematoria uh, was com crematoria was uh, completely uh, separated uh, from the from the uh, prisoners camp so there was no uh, direct connection at the moment we are standing on a bridge uh, that leads over this uh, little uh, uh, river the worm of the worm and uh, this didn't exist at the at the time when the when the, the camp was in operation so that uh, prisoners they had all had to be transported via the Schur house maybe uh, Stephanie can show you a little bit this behind the, the watchtower there's the Schur house so uh, prisoners that, uh, that have died they had to be uh, transported uh, through the Schur house and on the other side of the little river uh, they were transported to the uh, uh, crematory grounds so the ordinary prisoner they should not know anything about what was going on uh, here at the uh, crematory site crematory grounds uh, I have a little uh, panoramic view of the, cre cre the crematory grounds uh, that uh, Steffi will show us. So thank you very much to Steffi. And she's uh, make, doing the camera today. Uh, and we are standing at the moment, we are standing here at this, at this side. And here's the, the, the barracks and the, the former prisoners camp. And here was the entrance where the dead uh, corpses of the, the, the prisoners were transported to, to the crematorium. Uh, and uh, before we, we go inside this crematory area, I want to show you uh, a special uh, door, because as you see here, there's a, the uh, crematory was uh, surrounded by uh, two meters high walls, or nobody could see inside, and you see there's a second pathway. And there's an iron door that is very often was mentioned by surviving uh, prisoners that had to work in the in the in the crematory work detail and they said that this was the place where uh, at the door where people who were who were executed were were brought uh, into the crematory area so we will walk there now uh, and uh, there's also a very important fact that the, the uh, crematory grounds were not only a place where the dead bodies were burnt, uh, but it was also a very, very important execution site uh, of the Gestapo, uh, so the secret police, and also of the SS for southern, southern Germany and also parts of, uh, uh, of uh, Austria. So many people were brought here without be, becoming an inmate, become, without becoming a prisoner. Uh, they were directly brought to the crematoria grounds and uh, executed there. Uh, <coughs> here behind you see the wall, two meters high wall, that separates us uh, from the, the crematory grounds. And maybe you've also seen the little chapel on the left hand side. This is the Orthodox uh, chapel, a memorial, a religious memorial uh, that was uh, built uh, by a, a Soviet uh, by, by Russian uh, soldiers that to, were stationed in uh, Germany and before they withdraw after the unification of Germany they came here and built this uh, Orthodox chapel because uh, Soviet prisoners were the third most uh, number of prisoners here in, uh, in Dachau concentration camp. So here Steffi is showing you this door, 
that uh, was the last way for many, many uh, prisoners that were brought here for their execution. Maybe you have already heard of uh, uh, Georg Elser. He was a German carpenter who tried to kill uh, uh, Hitler in uh, 1939. But I want to introduce you uh, another uh, uh, <coughs> another person who had to walk through this door, very likely. Uh, uh, you can see her. Uh, Steffi is showing you the, 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 the portrait. It was taken in 1943. Her name is Noor Inayat Khan. Uh, I will tell you the story of Noor Inayat Khan. Noor Inayat Khan uh, was from Indian origin. As the, her father was Indian and an Indian Sufi. And she was born in 1914 in uh, Moscow. Uh, the, the, her family, uh, after the beginning of the First World War, they moved uh, to London and later to Paris. So she grew up in Paris. She studied uh, child psychology and uh, wanted to, uh, and, and also uh, wrote uh, books, ch children's books. Uh, and then uh, when, when the, the, the World War II broke out, they tried to escape from, from, from the, the German army to, to, to London. And she was of a pacifist uh, attitude, uh, but she decided we, we have to, to do, we have to, to engage and, and, uh, and uh, do something to, in, to, to, to stop Hitler. And so first she, she, uh, she worked in the uh, auxiliary forces of the, of the, of the, air, of the uh, air Force, of the uh, British Air Force, the Royal Air Force. Uh, but then she was hired uh, because she had extremely good language skills. So she spoke fluently uh, French and, and so uh, they, she was hired for the so-called uh, uh, special uh, operation executive. This is a special unit of the, uh, of the uh, uh, British Army that uh, was stationed in the occupied France, uh, and she she was she got an, a, a training, a special training, also a special training uh, for a, a wireless operator, and then she was flown to 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 occupied France and uh, transferring messages so she was from spies to 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 to, uh, to the, the, the British government, uh, but then she was betrayed. Uh, uh, by 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 uh, comrades, and uh, uh, she uh, uh, she was she was arrested by the Gestapo, and she was tortured. But she didn't say any single word. But unfortunately, she she uh, had made some notes about the messages she 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 was uh, transferring to uh, to to uh, to England, uh, and and so so they they. they uh, um, some more uh, uh, special operation executive uh, members could be arrested. Uh, so she was uh, then sent to, to, in, to prison in, uh, uh, in Germany, uh, first in, in Karlsruhe and then in Pforzheim. And she was a so-called night and fog prisoner. So there was uh, this one meant prisoners where no, they were not allowed to write any letters and nobody knew what happened to them. They just disappeared. And then there came the, came the order uh, that she has to be executed and on the 12th of uh, September 1944 she was transferred to Dachau uh, and the day after on the 13th of uh, September 1944 she was uh, executed by neck shooting here at the, at the crematory grounds in Dachau and later uh, when we are inside the, the, the crematorium uh, then uh, uh, Steffi will also show you there's a uh, commemorative plate uh, for for uh, Hasrat Inayat Khan that found her death here at the uh, at the crematory area. So now we try. We will. Uh, we can't pass the door because the door is very rusty and it's not possible to to pass through anymore. So we will go back and uh, uh, join the crematory grounds, the area of the crematory. Uh, when Dachau was opened in uh, 20, 22nd uh, March 1933, there was no crematory. Uh, the, the pe when people died there, when, when uh, prisoners died there, um, they were either 
uh, <coughs> given to their families or they uh, they were most, most mostly they were brought to uh, the crematorium in uh, in Munich at the east cemetery eastern cemetery but then when the war the war starts uh, the number of prisoners cre- uh, increased and uh, also the the uh, number of of uh, dead prisoners increased uh, very much uh, and so the ss decided to uh, uh, build a, a crematorium uh, and the first crematorium this was was built i will we will show it to you a little later but you see it now there's the sun going down and uh, in fr- here you see this uh, uh, first crematorium with two ovens and we will have a look at it a little bit later. So the pathway we are walking now was also the pathway uh, where the, the dead prisoners were transported to, uh, to, to the crematorium. So what you see now in front of us is the so-called um, Barrack X. It's the, the, the uh, big, bigger crematorium, and we will explain you later because why it was uh, uh, called uh, Barak X. When a prisoner died in the camp, he was immediately undressed. Uh, very often, it, it, he was also dissected, and then uh, he was brought uh, to to the morgue, uh, which was uh, uh, between the two barracks of the sick bay. And then there was a special special work detail uh, what that they usually uh, had the task to transport construction material uh, but they also had the, had the task to to transport uh, their death, dead uh, comrades and we have a, a, a drawing that was made from a, uh, made by a prisoner here you see this so called more express you see a cart and uh, you see prisoners that uh, are attached uh, have attached a rope to pull this uh, this cart it's called the so-called uh, more express and uh, with this more express they they transported their, their dead comrades uh, to the uh, crematorium site uh, and then and then it was uh, brought here and uh, behind me you see the two uh, two doors. You see two doors, and these two doors uh, behind the two doors, the, the, uh, is the the morgue. So that the, the that uh, corpse is restored, and behind the morgue, uh, the uh, is uh, and there was the the, the incineration room. Uh, uh, before the 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 the, the uh, dead corpses get burned. Uh, the, the, wax, the, the uh, crematory work detail had to extract uh, gold, golden teas and uh, the American liberators they found, like they did in, in uh, Auschwitz, they also found a lot of golden teas here in, uh, in uh, the Dachau uh, concentration camp. Uh, uh, how did the, how the, the the burning uh, was uh, took place, and then how, how the work was. It, uh, there's a, a very detailed description, even a little bit depressing description, of a surviving uh, inmate that had to work here in the crematorium work detail. Uh, his uh, name was Eugen Seibold, and uh, it's a testimony that I, w- I will w- uh, read to you that was recorded on November 10th, 1945, from Lieutenant A. 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 E. Lawrence uh, during the Dachau trials. And Eugen Seibold wrote, uh, uh, the, testi- the testimony of Eugen Seibold was, only naked corpses were, bo- were burned. Usually the inmates came from the camp naked. They were thrown on a heap and we had two large tongs to pull the corpses from the heap, put them on the stretcher and then push them into the oven. We shouldn't touch the bodies, as they were infected with diseases. The cremation of the corpses took about two hours. One furnace could hold seven or eight bodies. If the man 
were very emaciated. We could even put nine bodies in them. And uh, uh, this, the, the inmates of this work detail of the crematorium, uh, they survived uh, the, the war. And uh, after the war, uh, the, the deliberation, the, the uh, camp uh, was full of dead corpses. The, 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 the concentration camp was overcrowded. And so the Americans asked this uh, uh, work detail of the crematorium uh, to go on with the cremation. And uh, that's why uh, this picture could be taken. It was uh, um, uh, prisoners from Yugoslavian prisoners who took uh, their comrades uh, the photo, how they were, uh, uh, how this about the, the cremation of, of the of the bodies. You see these tongues. That that's exactly what the Eugen Seibold described. And then they were put with the tongues on the on the stretcher, and. Uh, then they were uh, pushed in the oven. And you see here, you see that the, uh, the prisoners, they, they had uh, carried their, their, uh, their prisoner's number. So it was either written on the body or it was uh, written on a, on a sheet that was attached to the toe so that uh, uh, they could be identified. And it's very interesting here, this, this prisoner, uh, his name is August Ziegler. Usually, if you see such a photo, it's hard to identify who is shown on the photo. And then I found uh, at the Arlson archives, I found the personal sheet of uh, this prisoner. His name is August Ziegler. Uh, and you see here is uh, his photograph. Uh, he was transferred from, uh, from the concentration camp uh, Natzweiler Struthof in September. 1944, where he already had to work uh, in the crematorium work detail, uh, and then he he was uh, he was sent to Dachau and had to go on with the same work. And August Ziegler plays an important role because he gave uh, extensive uh, uh, testimony about what was going on uh, here at the crematorium site at the, in, in, the, at the, in the last months before liberation. So if we go a little, if we pass a little bit on, and uh, we see that uh, <laughs> we see there's a back part of the building, uh, and uh, here you see two windows, and these two windows have been uh, two very important rooms because it was the rooms of the uh, head head of the crematorium. Uh, uh, it was the office of. Uh, Theodor Bongatz on the right, uh, the right window was his day room, and on the uh, left window it was the office. And this Eugen Seibold uh, uh, was uh, telling in, in this one of his testimonies that uh, uh, one week before the camp uh, was liberated, uh, there were uh, about uh, 22,000 uh, <coughs> incineration cards, documents for, for the incineration. Uh, and uh, there, 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 was, there was an order to burn all these uh, documents uh, one week before the American liberators arrived. Uh, and uh, the man who was, uh, who was responsible for this office and who was responsible for the crematory since the beginning of the, uh, since the beginning of the crematory was this man. His name is uh, Theodor Bongatz. He was a SS Oberscharführer, he was correspond to a staff sergeant. Um, he was an uh, alcoholic, and uh, uh, he, when he, uh, he, he was drunken in, in, uh, in the Dachau Taverns, he bragged about his extraordinary skills uh, uh, in exe doing executions by, by neck shots. Uh, and, uh, uh, so, so even his uh, SS uh, comrades were afraid of him. So probably he was also involved in the shooting of uh, uh, Noor Inayat Khan and her three uh, um, comrades that were executed uh, in, in this uh, in the crematory area. You see here the, the gravestone of uh, Theodor Bongatz, because as many SS uh, 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 
personal three days before the, the liberation uh, they 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 uh, got the uniforms of the of the german army of the wehrmacht and tried to 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 to, to escape uh, and so theodor bongard was arrested as a ordinary german soldier uh, and then he died on the 15th of uh, may 1945 in a prisoner of war camp of the american army and uh, as, a, as an ordinary soldier and it was only uh, through the investigations of the uh, death of uh, uh, georg elsa that they found this gravestone and it's now in a museum uh, for, uh, that for, for, for georg elsa uh, exactly here's the gravestone uh, on the other side of the of this this this, uh, this part of the building there were the rooms where where the uh, crematory work detail uh, uh, was was living so they they were not living in the in the in the concentration camp itself but so but uh, they were they were here where they were working uh, when we look uh, in, in our bag there uh, uh, graves with lot with ashes and uh, in this little forest uh, that is now it's like, like a park like a cemetery and there was the site where uh, the execution spy neck shooting took uh, took place now we have a, a look a short look at the old crematory the old uh, crematory was built uh, in 1940 uh, with uh, only two ovens. Uh, but then, when the when the uh, war against uh, Soviet Union started, Operation Barbarossa, uh, <coughs> then the, uh, <coughs> there, there, there was an order to to. Uh, uh, execute uh, Russian or Soviet uh, officers that were uh, uh, also active in the in the Communist Party, and they were uh, extracted from the uh, from the ordinary prisoners camp camp and brought to to Dachau, uh, and uh, then were, were burned here at the uh, crematory. But it was so many that it was not that uh, it was not enough and uh, the SS decided to build another crematorium that we will see afterwards. And here you see the, the two ovens of the old crematory and you also see uh, that, that it's uh, from the uh, top on Söhne. This was a company in Erfurt, Eastern Germany, that was uh, producing uh, this, this, this uh, uh, incinerators is this oven and they were also doing this for the Auschwitz extermination camp and uh, here you see the the logo of the uh, on, on the of the you know, Topf and Söhne company the prisoners that had to, to operate uh, this this uh, first crematory and they uh, were urged by by uh, Theodor Bongard by the SS to to kill themselves or to get killed, and we have one uh, one image uh, that was taken just beside this 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 building where we are now. It was the the storage building for the for the for the coffins, and there you see a member of the of the first uh, crematory. A work detail that has uh, been forced to kill himself. So uh, the, the personnel of this first, they were mainly Jews and uh, they uh, didn't survive. Uh, after six months, they uh, got killed or they had to kill themselves. But as I told you that uh, in 1941, uh, it, it, it already reached the limits of the capacity of this uh, old crematory and the SS decided to uh, uh, build a new building. That's the building that you see in front of us and this has a special name. It was a secret project. It was called uh, Barrack X and the reason why it was called Barrack X is because uh, there was not only facilities for incineration 
uh, and uh, but there was also a facilities for uh, uh, a facility for mass execution. Uh, <clears throat> If you if you have a look uh, towards the building, uh, there are two flaps that there were uh, there there were the, uh, the the flaps where the SS uh, uh, personnel should uh, introduce the prussic acid, the so-called cyclone B, uh, be and behind these flaps there was the the gas chamber, uh, as in. Auschwitz it was disguised as a shower room. Afterwards, we will pass through this building uh, uh, silently, so we don't do any explanations here at the memorial site in this area of of that and and, uh, and of execution. So uh, uh, Steffi will show you this building afterwards after my explanation. Uh, and uh, here we have. Uh, 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 map of, of this building. Uh, number five is the gas chamber uh, with the, this robing room here. Then there's also a, 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 a section with gas chambers and uh, maybe you could uh, show, show it to you. There's the, so Steffi is showing you these gas chambers. But these gas chambers uh, were for uh, disinfection of clothes uh, because there were many lice and, and insects that could uh, transmit diseases and, uh, and so in, in regular this regular periods the the, the, the clothes the uniforms of the prisoners uh, were disinfected with also with cyclone B uh, and uh, so here this was the uh, gas chambers for disinfection. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> as in Auschwitz, the, German, the, the American liberators, they also found the uh, cans of uh, Cyclone B here in, in, uh, in Dachau. But they, here in Dachau, they were only used for like, disinfecting uh, the, the, the uh, clothes. Uh, and there's no evidence for any mass killing with, with uh, Cyclone B or prussic acid uh, here in, 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 in Dachau, uh, even if the, the, the gas chamber was operational. Uh, and there was other concentration camps in Germany, in Ravensbrück, the women's concentration camp. There were mass executions in the gas chambers until uh, two days before liberation, or in Mauthausen in Austria, it was the same. So it's one of the big secrets uh, of Dachau why they, they didn't use this kill facility for mass killing here in Dachau. Uh, there's some evidence. There was some experimental mm -hmm, experimental uh, uh, experiments with, with uh, combat gases. So uh, there was an SS physician. Who, his name was Sigmund Rascher. And there is uh, a letter preserved where you asked Himmler, uh, we have this great facility here in, 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 in Dachau, so why shouldn't we test, uh, uh, test the, the, uh, the, the, the use, use people who are bound to, to, to die uh, and, and to, to test this uh, combat gases from, from for, the, for the German army. And there is also a, uh, was a, a, a Czech uh, uh, physician, his name was Frantisek Blaha, who uh, told that he was once called uh, in the gas chamber and there was uh, three people dead and uh, three unco unconscious and so there was some evidence that uh, this really took place. So when, when we go on with, with this map, we, here is the, the, the gas chamber, this was the room where the uh, dead bodies were dissected. Here's the oven, the, the, the four ovens, the incinerators. Here's the, uh, air, the, the, the rooms of uh, Theodor Bongard, the SS commander here of the crematorium. Uh, and here, this is the, the, uh, the living rooms of the, of the uh, prisoner work detail. Uh, uh, the, 
capo, so called the, the, the head of the of the work detail uh, of, of the crematorium uh, work detail. Uh, you can see him here on this uh, on this image. His name was Emil Mal. You see him. This is a photo taken at the Dachau trials that took place here in 1945-1946, and. Uh, uh, Emil Mar was condemned to death as the hangman of uh, of uh, the crematorium. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he in his uh, affidavit he, he said that he uh, took part in 800 executions here in the crematorium. Here's his office card, Emil Mar, his, his uh, prisoner's number, here you see the date when he was he came to to Dachau, uh, and uh, and uh, when we are later when we get inside the room so the, the, in the, of the of the of the incinerators, uh, the beams the wooden beams uh, they were used for hanging uh, prisoners. So this was uh, why uh, Emil Marl was uh, accused. You see here the hangings in the. In the, in the in front of of, of the naked prisoners in front of the uh, of the ovens, the oven. Uh, Emil Mal was condemned to death, but he always said it was uh, an order of uh, Emil Mal, so I couldn't uh, I couldn't refuse, and, and and if I would have refused, I would have been killed. Uh, all, uh, also would have been killed. So finally. It, and he ended up uh, to, for 10 years uh, in prison, and he left prison in 1952. And uh, Emil Mahl uh, remembered uh, one, uh, very well his executions, and uh, he remembered an execution uh, of a woman. Uh, and uh, I, will, I, will, I will read what, what, he, what he is telling about this woman. It's the story of Fritzi Kohn. Fritzi Kohn was a uh, Jew Jewess, uh, and she. So maybe we should start here. So here, we have the, the office card of Fritzi Fritzi Kohn. That you, that was, the real name was Kahn. So they made an, a mistake when when they uh, were writing this card. And you see Fritzi Kohn. She was an uh, uh, employee at the. Uh, Born in Vienna, here born in Vienna, she was born on the 26th July 1917. Uh, she was a uh, prisoner Jew, Schutzhaft uh, Jude, her prisoner's number. And you see here that she arrived the 29th of July 1944 from Auschwitz. And you see, whenever there's a red cross on this uh, office card, this means that they were inserted or they were stamped on the office cards when uh, someone uh, was die was 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 killed or, or when when was when, 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 when was dead and so here her, her her the date of her execution was the 15 September 1944 i did some investigation about fritzi Kohn and i found uh, and i found a deportation list from the uh, 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 document center of the Austrian resistance, and here is the de she, uh, Fritzi Kohn was deported on the January 11th, 1942, to Riga. You see here is the name of Fritzi Kohn, and she was deported with her mother and her father. You see here is Friederike Kahn, Friederike Sarah Kahn, Kahn Karl Israel, Kahn Susie. Uh, Sarah, <coughs> and uh, uh, you see also, and, and she she was uh, first brought to to Riga, and from Riga she she came to Auschwitz, and then with a uh, transportation from Auschwitz she came to uh, to Dachau. Uh, her father was brought to to the concentration camp uh, Kaunas. You see, uh, uh, it's I think here Kauen on the first of August, nineteen forty four. So. Two days after her, his, her daughter, uh, and both were brought to the satellite camp of Kaufering. You see it over here, uh, and also uh, uh, Karl Kahn, her father, didn't survive the satellite camp. The trace of her mother is completely lost. 
And then what, why, why was uh, uh, Fritzi Korn killed uh, here exactly at this place, at the, the uh, old, uh, old gallows stand? And uh, this was because uh, in Auschwitz she fell in love with a camp guard and uh, apparently became pregnant. And then she was transferred to Dachau, to the satellite camp of uh, Kaufering. And there, there she was accused of, uh, of racial defilement. So it was strictly forbidden for, to, to, for, for Jews, Jews to, to have any uh, sexual contact with, with, with Germans. And uh, Emil Mahl uh, describes the last moments of uh, Fritzi Kohn here. Uh, I have an especially good memory of the execution of the Jew Jewess Fritzi Kohn. She was sentenced to death for racial defilement. The accused was forced to fully undress in the gas chamber. At first, she balked at appearing naked in front of the many men present. She was then brought with force out of the gas chamber by the SS Hauptschauführer Kuhn and Böttger. She attempted to cover herself with her hands. This evoked laughter and obscene jokes from the SS members present. She was then made to stand on the trap door and they put the noose around her neck. And uh, the Pol Pol some Polish prisoners after the liberation, they put exactly at the place where, uh, where the, the gallows stand uh, was, they put this, this, this uh, uh, stone plug uh, to, to, to remember uh, this. this uh, and uh, here we have a, a drawing of a prisoner uh, who, it, it, so during the time when it was in operation, no other, no prisoner was allowed to come here. But after the liberation, the, the prisoners from the concentration camp, they were curious about what happened there. So they uh, talked to the, the, the prisoners of the work detail here in the crematorium. And, uh, and uh, he, Georg Tauber, made a drawing about uh, the gallows stand and about an execution. So this was taken place. So now we will uh, silently go through this building before we come to the end for today. Uh, we also see the commemoration uh, plaque of Fano uh, Inayat Khan.
So after the liberation, uh, the, the crematorium uh, was used for the first exhibition here in Dachau. The reason why why they uh, uh, made the exhibition here at, at this um, site of, 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 of killing, a site of, of death, was that uh, the camp uh, was, uh, um, after the liberation, uh, was used as a, as a refugee camp. So the, the, the barracks and, and, uh, and the buildings, they, they, they were in use, and this was the only remaining rooms that could be used for the, for the exhibition. And here I have an image of the first exhibition. Uh, this started in 1945, uh, where people go to the museum and you see, this was the plate that we have seen before. And, uh, and uh, here is uh, an image of uh, an SS soldier who, who was uh, beating an, 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 an inmate. And you see the, the, the whipping trestle. So this uh, was how the first exhibitions looked like. Uh, and then uh, in uh, 19... 53 there was a letter from the uh, uh, administration of the Bavarian castles uh, and they said that the, the exhibition had to be uh, closed down so uh, there was uh, no longer any exhibition allowed here so there was even uh, a politician who tried to apply for, for, for tearing down uh, the, the whole building but it was not possible because there was a conflict between France and Germany uh, that um, sites of, of the Holocaust of, of, of the uh, uh, National Socialist crimes that should not be uh, destroyed. And uh, one of the first uh, sculptures here in, uh, in Dachau, it was uh, erected in 1950, uh, it's a sculpture from uh, an artist, his name was Fritz Koller. It's called The Unknown Prisoner. Uh, and uh, this, uh, Steffi shows you the, the, the face of this uh, unknown prisoner. Uh, and you see the traces of his uh, imprisonment. You see, he said that he has uh, not enough, had not enough food, that he maybe saw a lot of pain. Uh, but what's important is he's not broken. So the, the purpose of the SS was always to break to 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 the, uh, the, the people where were assigned a number and, 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 and so, so they were taken their dignity. But he 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 he, he preserved his dignity, and he is looking uh, in the, this out in the distance. Out in the distance also means uh, uh, in the future. So maybe he's asking us, what will we do with the knowledge about the crimes that happened in the center of Germany and, 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 and during that time? What are our conclusions? And at the very end, I uh, want to, to uh, show you another uh, stone. It's, it's a little bit similar to a gravestone. And uh, uh, when, when we read the, the, the books about the prisoners that survived the, the concentration camps, they said you always had needed a, a very, very strong motivation to survive because the living conditions were so, so extremely hard and uh, the, uh, starving and, and, and diseases and torture. And, uh, uh, but one mo uh, motivation was also to... to, to to be able to 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 uh, to give testimony to the future generations what what happened uh, uh, in, in, in uh, what 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 they were suffering and uh, here it's written in German denke daran wie hier starben so uh, always think about uh, how we died here uh, at this site the crematorium uh, and uh, I have a I have a a calendar, a calendar from, from 1944, and you see uh, Noah Inayat Khan, she was executed the 13th of September, it was a Wednesday, 13th of September 1944, 
in Fritzi Kohn two days later on the Friday the 15th uh, of September 1944. So at, at the end I wanted to uh, light the candle for these two brave young women uh, and uh, thank you for, for following us uh, here at the, at the digital live tour. Our next live tour will be in German on on, uh, uh, on Wednesday, the, the, the 9th of, uh, of November, by my colleagues uh, Maximilian and Stephanie. And thank you very much for following us. And uh, now, we, are there any questions? Okay, so I will light the candles for Fritz Kohn. I hope that I one step a little more, uh, more maybe uh, find uh, an image of her and uh, to 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 uh, and tears. And one more candle for Noah Inayat Khan. Thank you very much for following us.